Hi, my name is Guillermo. I'm a senior technical service manager in a logistics company. Um, today we're going to talk about our transition from uh, Cisco WebEx over to Teams. For more reviews, please click the link below. Some of the problems that we were addressing to when it came to Cisco WebEx and Teams is just the ability, you know, as the world is changing and we're transitioning more to a hybrid environment of work from home and remote work was how do we keep the same connection that we have with associates in a corporate life environment still connected in a way that we did in a normal conference room. And that was the biggest challenge we had is how do we keep the teams connected as if we were in live in person. When we started using Teams, we found out that Teams really excelled at keeping things simple. And what I mean by that, um, nobody likes the uh, idea of starting a meeting and having to click on multiple links, download this, call this, all this configuration we found out was very complex. And what Teams really did is it simplified the process of having a meeting together where you could video and interact with each other. Literally, we had it so we could have a one-click meeting join and that really just excelled our productivity and made things easier and also it allowed our associates to say hey you know it's so easy to do this why don't we start having meetings together virtually and actually connect and collaborate more what WebEx really excelled at was giving you a ton of options and configurations in your meeting. Whereas some products were straight video conferencing and chatting, Cisco WebEx allows you to really configure the meeting to fit your needs and allows a lot of customization. And really it's kind of, I, I like to describe it as more for the advanced users where you can build this web meeting to fit your needs and give you a lot of customizations and how you want to hold this meeting. For Cisco WebEx, I, WebEx, I have to admit that it's um, it is a little bit challenging to get it started because it is um, you know it's an app that's by itself. It's not necessarily integrated with anything else, so you have to do a little bit of work with configuring it and building it out to how you want it to fit your environment. Now, on the flip side, Microsoft Teams, if you're already an O365 customer, it's already natively built into it, and the level of effort to get it going is really really low in the beginning because it's already built into your products, it's already built in that Outlook, and to schedule a meeting, it's really a one-click option for it. So you have that polar opposite where you know Teams is Microsoft oriented, which means a lot of businesses already have Microsoft in it, so it's already baked in, kind of ready to go, whereas Cisco WebEx is its own product that you really have to kind of build to fit your needs. While they both excel very well at what they're, what they're meant to do, you have one that you have to kind of customize and build into your environment, and one that's already Already kind of baked in to what you already have going in your environment. When you're looking at video conferencing and really just team collaboration on it, one, you have to consider one, uh, what is your technical savvy, you know, users, you know, how technically inclined are your end users? Are they the kind of people that like to tinker or are you do have the kind of users that like to, hey, I just want to click a button, start a meeting. I don't want to do anything, you know, really fancy on it. I want something simple and ready to go for. That's a huge consideration when you come for these kind of video conferencing solutions because there's a lot of products out there that offer a lot of variety of things and you have to figure out okay so what is it that I'm trying to accomplish is it straight just video conferencing is it I want to have video conferencing and a little bit more in your things you have to that's the biggest thing is keep your end users in mind when you think of these products and figure out hey do I want simple or do I want complex and that's really going to be the biggest thing on it um, second thing is obviously budgeting when you come for cost comparison, you have to think, okay, so what is my environment? If it's already a Microsoft environment, chances are you're gonna have a better opportunity to introduce something that's natively already there, such as Teams, where you don't really have to expend a lot extra to get extra features in Teams, Whereas if you go externally to a, you know, a standalone product, you're probably gonna spend a little bit more. Yes, you'll be able to get a product you customize more, but that's kind of where you have to sit is figure out you know, what end users you have, what are they looking for, and what does your environment already have? Because that's a big thing too. You wanna figure out, you know, get everything that you already have included and then look up to add things extra.